Okay, so this is a, a kidney, and we're going to talk about actually the blood flow of the kidney is kind of easier one to do here. So that's what I'm going to do for you guys. So from, and I don't have a red one, I don't have red, but whatever, we'll use blue. Okay, so from the heart, we go down the aorta, the, the thoracic and the abdominal aorta, and it's going to branch off into what's called a renal artery. Okay, this is from the aorta down here. Renal artery goes in. Renal artery is going to uh, become these little interlobal lobar inside the lobes of the, the kidney, the interlobar arteries. From those, we're going to go um, at the base of the pyramid. It's going to come way up there like this, go this way. Okay, everything comes up there. The base, remember the pyramids are this way. Okay. Remember, there's about eight of them up in here. Now, from there, we're going to go to a place called the Bowman's cap capsule, which is where the glomerulus is, and we're going to draw that whole thing out. It's a real kind of a pain. Um, from the Bowman's capsule, you're going to hit the glomerulus. Well, the Bowman's capsule actually covers the glomerulus. Glomerulus is a little tiny bit of capillaries, which is like all through this section here. Okay, all these little capillary little knots that are up in there. And eventually, that's going to <coughs> split into some efferent. There's an efferent which enters the Bowman's capsule. Efferent arterial. Okay, or artery, these are arterials. And then there's an uh, afferent one that leaves it. Okay, so efferent in becomes the glomerulus, and then the afferent out. Okay, these split into the peritubular, car um, uh, the, 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 the efferent splits then into the uh, peritubular uh, capillaries. And those peritubular capillaries go all along this area. Okay, and through here, along these things are called convoluted tubules and the loop of Henle and stuff like that. Eventually, they become paratubular capillaries, become uh, interlobar veins, and then arcuate veins, which, which loop around again, and then eventually they go back out, the veins go this way, okay, and then they become the uh, interlobar veins, just like the interlobar arteries, and then it becomes the uh, 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 renal vein. Okay, and then back to the heart through the vena cava. So it's a whole list of things. I'm going to do the whole list for you right here. <clears throat> so you have them. You can pause it. Hopefully I can turn, remember how to turn this down when I do the, uh, uh, <clears throat> when I do everything. When I do all of the, I'm going to do it here, right? There. So you go heart, heart to the um, aorta. Okay, from aorta to renal. Arteries, we're going to do AA for that one. From renal arteries, we're going to go to uh, it's called inter, which is inside lobar, lobular actually. Arteries, arteries, two little A's. From there, you're going to hit um, to the uh, at the base of the pyramids. Okay, base of the pyramids. From there, we're going to go to the bone of the glomerulus. Glomer you low glomerulus which is just a bunch of capillaries from the capillaries we're going to split into the peritubular peritubular capillaries okay and from the peritubular capillaries we're going to become interlobar boop 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 boop, boop. these are going to enter lobular veins okay and then from there we're going to go uh uh, to the renal vein. Oh, I can't see it down there, huh? The renal vein, and then and eventually the uh, uh, vena cava, and then back to the heart. So it's a big, of course, it's a cycle because that's what it is. So I couldn't write these small enough, but maybe I'll put them up. Uh, let me um, go through that again real quick. Okay, so today we're going to talk about. It's called the nephron. I'll, I'll type it up there. Nephron, the first part. So the nephron is the functional unit of your kidney. And it's a very important thing to understand. It's the nephron is the functional unit. Remember how the sarcomere is the functional unit of, of the muscle and the, the cell is the, the basic unit of life and all of those kind of things. So the nephron is the functional unit of the kidney. Um, the first part is called the glomerular capsule. And around it is called a thing called Bowman's capsule. It's called Bowman's capsule, B-O-B-O-W-M. I'll put it up here. Bowman's capsule. Okay, that's in the cortex. 
way up high. Remember out the outside. Remember you have those three layers. Then you have the cortex, and then you have the medulla, and then you have the uh, minor calyces and uh, major calyces, and then you have the renal pelvis, and then you go out to the ureter. Way up in the, in the cortex up there, you've got the um, Bowman's capsule or the glomerular capsules. Okay, from there, there's these little tiny guys called podocytes that are on that glomerular capsule, and they help filter uh, stuff out, you know, that, that's coming through. Um, uh, all of that's called the renal corpuscles. Okay, so we're going to go over the whole thing. So here's how it kind of works. You're going to see other books. It's very, very. It's convoluted itself, which convoluted means twisted and and kind of messy. So I'm going to draw the whole thing out for you. Okay, kind of right here. Uh, hopefully. Okay, so here's Bowman's capsule. Okay, and remember you have you have an in. Where's my other light? I am missing all my my pins. So maybe you have your 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 efferent, okay, or your afferent coming in uh, into it, and your efferent leaving that one, right? Okay. So we have our glomerulus, our Bowman's capsule, which becomes um, the it's called proximal. It's got proximal, and it's squiggly, okay. And then it becomes a thing called the loop of Henle. Which comes down, it gets narrowed down here. Um, it'll go like this, go like this, and you see how it gets like a little narrow. So this is Bowman's. This is the the proximal convoluted tubule, convoluted tubule. Okay, so this is put a B here. Bowman's capsule. Okay, this is a proximal because it's nearest to it. Convoluted means squiggly. Down here is the loop of Henle, and it loops around. Uh, loop Henle right here. Then it becomes um, the loop to Henley gets narrower and then it becomes loop Henley widens at the base and then goes back up goes back up again up through here and squiggles around again okay and then that goes to what's called the collecting duct so up through here okay this is called the distal convoluted tubule and it attaches to this thing which is called a collecting duct all the way down, and this is where you have collecting duct. That's where you have your urine start. Okay, so this is whole thing is inside those pyramids. Remember those guys? <sighs> Starts way up. This is this is up in the cortex. Okay, so this is cortex land. Okay, and this is pyramid land. Pyramid, and also we call it medulla. Okay, medulla land. Okay, there you go. There's basically the nephron. That's the the design of the nephron. That's the the <clears throat> basic um, anatomy of it. Now, if you look at the book, it is way more complex and way more a pain in the ass because you've got so much going on. They they draw it like it, apparently like it is, which is uh, the distal convoluted tubule and the, and the proximal convoluted tubule are all mixed up in there, and it's really hard to tell what's what. So here we just split it up. This is just a diagram. That's all it is. Okay, guys. So. <clears throat> um, hopefully, let's see, did I miss anything? Uh, renal corpuscles, Bowman's capsule, uh, podocytes, and the glomerulus from there, the renal capsule to filtrate and filter fluid goes to the renal tubule. Uh, renal tubule, first part from the glomer glomerulus plus uh, the glomerulus, which is in here. Okay, so I'll put it in here, G. Okay, that's the glomerulus inside there. And remember, the glomerulus is just the, the capillaries that come in from the efferent, efferent uh, arterioles. And then the arterioles come out and wrap around these guys, which we talked about before. So let's see, uh, it's more narrow, loop of Henle. Boom, way back machine. Descending loop of Henle um, down through here, because this is way back machine for you guys, especially for your anatomy, uh, if you had me in the last class. The descending loop of Henle, the narrow part, is simple squamous epithelium. Remember, one layer, good for diffusion, good for getting stuff out. Now, the second, the rest of the nephron, is all cuboidal. Remember, we talked about cuboidal, uh, simple cuboidal epithelium. So it's one layer, simple, of cube-shaped cells that are really good for, like, uh, moving stuff around, too, as well. So, but simple squamous and the rest of it, all um, simple cuboidal. Okay? So there you go. Way back machine. Glomerulus, loop of Henle, proximal convoluted tubule, loop of Henle, distal convoluted tubule to the collect connecting, uh, the collecting duct. 
collecting ductus is going to go down eventually getting to your minor calyces and your major calyces and then to the renal pelvis and then from the renal pelvis out through the ureter down the ureter all the way through um, down that ureter in your back and goes down into the back of the uh, urinary bladder which is uh, distensible so it stretches and then the detressor muscle will squeeze that and push urine out through first the the first uh, involuntary uh, sphincter and then the the second sphincter which you should have control of is the voluntary one and that one you can uh, have, enjoy your micturition reflex and uh, be happy about going to the bathroom anyway this is Dr. Sean don't forget to subscribe, guys, because I'm going to be posting more of these same videos uh, as we go. Okay? Thanks. Okay, guys, remember we're going to do some of the kidney stuff. Okay, so here we go, the kidney. There's the ureter that comes down. Remember, we have the cortex on the outside of it and the medulla on the inside, and we have these things in here called the pyramids. The pyramids eventually lead to the minor calyces, which is in here, and then the major calyces in here, and then out through the ureter. So we've kind of gone over some of that. We went over the Bowman's capsule, which is up in the cortex. We went over the three layers around the kidney, which is going to be your uh, uh, fibrous layer on the outside, and then the adipose layer, and the, the, the capsule, fibrous capsule, adipose capsule, and then fascia, the renal fascia around there. Then you have cortex, then you have medulla. Okay, so we've gone through kind of some of that. We know the pyramid is made of tubes that are called basically the loops of Henle, and some of the convoluted tubules, the distal and the proximal convoluted tubules. And uh, we got the blood flow, which was. Um, heart to aorta to uh, renal arteries, from renal arteries to the the uh, arterioles in there, and then eventually the capillaries and coming back through the venules and the veins, and then through the renal vein, and then through the vena cava and back to the heart. So we got all that kind of stuff, right? So remember the functions. We have three functions, main functions of the kidney. Glomerular, glomerular filtration, tubular reabsorption, so through the tubes, you're going to reabsorb stuff that you need. And then tubular secretion, which is you're going to get stuff out from that system too. So there's a constant moving in and out of each of those kind of uh, different materials. And that's going to be from the water, from the um, uh, different salts you have in there, the calciums, the magnesiums, the potassiums, the sodiums, the bicarbonates, the, um, geez, what else is it? Glucose is going to bounce back and forth in there. Uric acid, urea, ascorbic acid, penicillin even goes, kind of bounces around through those things too. Um, sulfates and phosphorus, um, magnesium. So number one is glomerular filtration. Now in the glomerulus, remember that's a little capillary thing. That's where we have mostly water. Okay, we're going to filter out water. Remember those little podocytes are going to help you pull out some water and filter out through that by the, by the basically just the pressure, the osmotic pressure of the, the water in there. The other things that too we're going to pull out is going to be your sodium. So I'll write these up here. The squeaking is just the table. Okay, so we have sodium, which is positive. We're going to have potassium. Remember that was calcium, which is positive. We have calcium positive, positive. And then we have magnesium, Mg, positive, positive. And then we have chloride, Cl, which is negative. We have bicarbonate, bicarb, 
put it that way. We have sulfates. Uh, hopefully, I can do this. Uh, phosphorus. Uh, yeah, this is phosphorus is just P, I think. That's all it is. Phosphorus. And we have glucose, urea, okay, and uric acid. Uric acid. Okay. All those things are, are filtered out through glomerular filtration, step one. Step two. Step two, tubular reabsorption. This is where we get um, uh, active transport glucose. Okay, this is the second part. Back to the, this goes back to the blood through the convoluted tubules. Okay, this is the the proximal convoluted tubule. Actually, remember that one. Glucose is moved by active transport. Osmo water move is moved by osmosis uh, in the descending loop. Remember the descending loop was what? That was the descending loop of Henle was simple squamous epithelium. Okay, right after the proximal tubule. So the proximal tubule pull out some glucose skin. Um, or pull in some glucose, move glucose back and forth. Then you have water moving back and forth. Ascending, as we come back to the other side, the ascending tube, uh, um, tubule, the loop of Henle, sorry. Amino acids, amino acids, aminos, creatine. Remember creatine? That was used for... Um, uh, recycling lactic acid, lactic acid, acid, and then we have like uric acid, all these acids, acid, okay, um, a citric acid, citric acid, Oop. ascorbic acid, ascorbic acid, which ascorbic acid is vitamin C. So you get that one out of there too. Uh, also phosphates, calcium, uh, put over here, uh, phosphate, phate, calcium, uh, sodium, and a, oops, and a, and a potassium and a chloride. Okay, all that stuff, all that stuff. Okay, controlled by this section, okay, the second section, which is gonna be your proximal convoluted tubule and your descending loop of Henle and that kind of stuff. And the, it looks like the, the ascending, descending and then ascending, the second part of the loop of Henle. You're gonna have um, two, two hormones that you release called vasopressin and aldosterone, which we'll talk about later. We're not gonna worry about those right now. So, part three is tubular secretion. Tubular secretion from the plasma to the renal tubules. Remember the renal tubules? Proximal convoluted tubule, okay, uh, actively secretes penicillin, and all the weird things they figured out, creatine, histamine, and hydrogen ions. Remember, hydrogen ions are your guys which uh, create, you know, make it acidic. And so you're getting rid of more acid. The distal convoluted tubule, that's where you have potassium ions moving back and forth mostly. So this can change the way your heart works, even your blood pressure as well. Anyway, that's kind of the physiology, those three main parts. So we have glomerular filtration, so we'll put a G, G, F, glomerular filtration, tubular reabsorption, and then tubular secretion. So be tubular, do your studies, and uh, hopefully you guys, this helps you with this stuff. Look at your... Um, your online stuff as well. I've never liked the, the, the PowerPoints on there, but I can't really use mine, so I'm kind of like supplementing it with this. Hopefully it's easy enough for you guys to get some of that information, okay? Don't forget to subscribe at the bottom. You can leave a comment if you really want to. You don't have to. You can also chat with me uh, on the Canvas thing. And we're going to go through that. Hopefully we'll be able to go through all this stuff with each one of the, uh, the classes. Remember, the class is going to be different because it's all online now. Anyways, it's Dr. Sean signing off. Bye. We did that. Blood flow, make duration. Did that, did that, did that, did that, did that, did that, did that. Where the heck is my last page? Here we go. Okay. Okay, so. Re, 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 review. We're going to do a whole bunch of stuff. We're doing the urinary system. There is two kidneys, two ureters, and one bladder, and one urethra. And most people, I don't think there's anybody that has more. So the remember, the, the kidney has three layers on the outside. It had the fibrous capsule, the adipose capsule, and then it had the renal fascia. And then you had the, the um, uh, 
cortex and then the medulla medulla had the pyramids in it the pyramids became uh the minor and major calyces and the the um Oh, what the hell is that thing called? The, the renal pelvis. Down through here, we have the renal pelvis turns into the ureters. The ureters go all the way down, and they connect with the bladder at the back of the bladder. So they go behind. So we can do this. Oh, shoot. Okay, so whatever. Okay, the bladder, and they, they connect down behind. There's another one up and through here. I'm not going to go through and draw the whole thing because I won't be able to see what I'm doing. Okay, so there's another. There's two kidneys, right? So from there, you've got this guy, which is called the ure ureter. And remember, urine is put in through from the pelvis into the ureter and then it moved by peristalsis which is smooth muscle activity of this guy and that helps move it down now that has really three layers like everything else does but it really kind of has four um, it has the um, connective outer layer which is called adventitia and it's the outer outer layer and then it has a second i will put it right right here so it says like if you cut it side cut it like that remember like a transverse cut across that tube you have the outside which is the the adventitia the outer layer the second layer is the muscle okay the muscle layer muscular layer so that's contractile right and then you have connective tissue in through here I'll do that this way and then you have transitional epithelium remember transitional epithelium from way back we've gone over like all our stupid epitheliums again it's from a way back machine transition transitional epithelium is is cuboidal cells that are able to squish down and distend to look like squamous cells when there's enough fluid in there for for whatever reason you know you're like you've, you haven't urinated in a while now the second one is we come down here and we're going to have in this section of the bladder the very bottom of the bladder you have a little triangle area called the trigone t r i g o n e okay the trigone is at the bottom down here the two ureters open up right at the top of it and then you come down at the bottom and that's where you're going to have your first and second um uh, sphincters you're gonna have your autonomic one your like kind of automatic one your, your involuntary and then you'll have your skeletal muscle voluntary sphincter at the bottom okay uh, at the end of that you have what's called urethra urethra is your your tube from the bladder out to the outside and then females it's about an inch and a half and in males it goes remember it's from inside it goes about eight inches okay and um it's again it's distensible it's that that uh, uh, uh it's a mucous membrane once it leaves the bladder actually so we've got that kind of thing here now other other interesting things about the kidneys and the, the whole system here is you're looking at about 1200 milliliters that's 1.2 liters that's a water bottle i was going to bring a water bottle but i forgot you know, the, the small water bottles that's 1.2 liters of blood travels through this sucker every minute that's quite a bit so i guess but through both of them every minute so like, you know, half of that so 600 milliliters per minute through each of the kidneys that's going to be done 60 times a day about 45 gallons of of urine is going to go through this whole system so our urine fluid just plasma remember the plasma is going to be washed through the blood's going to be washed through here and cleaned and all that kind of stuff urine is about 95 percent water the rest of it is all the urea and the uric acid and whatever you know, extra stuff you got to get out of you. And that's about you know, half a liter to two and a half liters full full bladder here. I mean, you, you'll know if you haven't sat and peed in a while. It feels like two and a half liters. And two and a half liters is quite a bit. So things you don't want to see in your urea. And we have like, you, it's, it's the thing and then urea. So we have hematourea. So um, that's going to be blood in your urine and pyorrhea is puffs in your urine uh, glucose glucose glucoseuria is going to be uh, sugar in your urine you shouldn't have that either and there's a whole bunch of other stuff you shouldn't have in there but that's basically the the, the main part of it so anyway this is dr sean we're going over the last bit here um don't forget to subscribe down the bottom leave a comment if you need to you can do a thumbs up a thumbs down if you want to i don't care uh, i'm going to give you guys the grade that you guys get on the test and hopefully this is going to help you out this is supposed to be supplemental for the test that you guys are going to take on the urinary system and i'm going to try to do these for each of them so good luck have fun and whatever bye Ugh. <sighs>